Hello and welcome to Lauren.Live, the spirituality, health, and lifestyle podcast. I have a- Abe K- Kmark. Is that how you say it? You got it. Okay. You it. Stuttering on that. With me today, um, and Abe is the founder of True Made Foods, um, which we will get into in a minute. All the condiments, they're amazing. Uh, thank you for being here today, Abe. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me, Linda. This is really great. Lauren, this is really great. Really excited to be here. Totally. Um, So Abe is a Washington, D.C. native, and um, Mm -hmm. his mother has the uh, Southern Italian roots, and then his father, the Southern, is it Southern, South Virginia? Yeah, Southern Virginia. Okay. Yeah, Shenandoah. Okay, cool. So he's got some really cool mix of uh, heritage there, which has kind of influenced him with cooking and food. And I'm going to let him give more of an intro on himself in a minute. But uh, as you guys know, if you've seen some of my videos, I do a lot of product reviews. And this will actually be the first uh, food one. And I'll probably do an actual separate product review um, once I've tried all of them. I have tried the ketchup so far over here. And we've already gone through one tube. And then (laughs) one of the mustards, the uh, I believe it was the, which is the one that has the little mustard seeds Oh, the uh, the brown mustard, our Bavarian style. Bavarian. We call it Bavarian style, yep. but yeah, like the deli or brown mustard. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So those are the ones that I've tried so far. But as you can see, I have all the barbecue sauces, the other mustards, and then they do make hot sauces as well. Um, so sure. the reason we even found you is my husband was just grocery shopping in, here in Washington. We have um, Fred Meyer. Uh, I think it was actually, it may have been QFC. That's where he found mm-hmm. the ketchup. And then we ended up ordering the samplers on your website. So we'll get all that information out to people at the end. But uh, expect to see a product review because I'm a big fan. And Great. if you know me, you know that it's super important for products and foods to be clean. I believe that we need to be conscious about what we're putting in our bodies. And uh, there's far too many chemicals and dyes out there. So that's the whole reason we're uh, featuring you today is that True Made Foods has has done it. It's possible to make a really good product that's all natural and either does not have added sugar or is low in sugar. So we're going to dive into it. We're going to talk about all the things. Uh, let's get going. Tell us a little bit more about yourself, Abe, and just kind of how True Made Foods was founded and birthed and all, all those things. Yeah, so... Um uh, I'm a dad, father of four, and that's really how this came about, um, is I was, I've always tried to eat healthy, tried to eat very anti-sugar, things like that. And, you know, I had young, as a young dad, I had dreams of my kids not eating sugar and especially not eating ketchup. I hated ketchup. I've always thought ketchup was like red sugar. Um, it really is. It's like red corn syrup. Average Heinz ketchup is two thirds, uh, corn syrup. It's disgusting. Um, and, um, but of course, uh, reality kind of slapped me in the face. If you've ever dealt with a five-year-old at dinner time, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and, you know, we weren't going to stop grilling. We weren't going to stop eating barbecue, you know, and you want to go to ballparks. You want to take the kids out to Friday night football games and things like this. And, you know, that stuff is everywhere. And so, you know, they're, they're exposed to it and you have to deal with it and somehow. And so I was losing these battles at the dinner table or at restaurants where they were insisting on putting ketchup on everything. And I was like, well, you know, if I'm going to lose a battle, I'm going to win the war. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> I fell back on this. Um, and I started true made foods. Um, it kind of also happened a little bit accidentally, uh, cause you can't just start a company. I mean, people always say that that's always the typical story. It's like, I had this real problem and I need to solve it. But really these days, you know, there needs to be, an extra impetus to really be crazy enough to start your own company. Um, cause it is an insane thing to do. Uh, but the, uh, what happened was I was working for a charity here in Washington, DC, um, as their kind of director of innovation and their in-house entrepreneur. And I was helping them launch products under, um, social impact products. So like we did this, uh, coexist coffee from, Uganda that I found this uh, cooperative of Jewish, Muslim and Christian farmers. And we were sourcing the coffee from that. I just like fell in love with the product business, with the food business doing that. And uh, then the charity ran out of money and they let me go. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so I just like poured my heart and soul into building the product. And I had to, you know, start from scratch. And I was like, well, you know what, if I'm, maybe it's a sign, it's time for me to start my own product, my own company. And so that's how true made foods was born. Wow. That's really cool. Okay. And I mean, you could have done anything, right? You could have done anything in the food industry. So what specifically you were just noticing when you're out and about and at home, just the high amount of sugars in, in condiments in general. And you thought like that'd be a good niche to get into or. 
Yeah. I mean, initially when I was thinking of starting my own company, I was really like, I just spent a year and a half in coffee. So I was really like focused on coffee and I'm a big coffee drinker and I love it. And thinking, you know, that'd be great, but it's, it's such a saturated market yeah. and there, I mean, there's a lot of money in coffee, but and a lot of opportunity, but it's like, there's, there's a different type of coffee for everything you could ever want. Right. Yeah. So unless you're super unique um, and you really have a great story, it's really hard to break in. Um, and I wasn't really finding that. And <clears throat> so uh, and I had a friend, I had a co-founder initially who only lasted a year in the business. He, he wasn't really set out for this. Um, but he, he gave me the idea of putting veggies and things. And I was like, well, that's how I cook for my kids all the time. And he said, well, well what about veggies and ketchup? And I was like, that's where the, like the fireworks went off, light bulb went off. Cause I was like, I was like, wait a second. It's like, I grew up, um, learning to cook. I learned to cook by making pasta sauces with my mom. Like my mom's Sicilian. Like we, uh, we cooked homemade pasta sauce all the time. You know, Prego and Ragu were four letter words in our house. Like you would never, ever buy a jarred sauce. Like, and, uh, and my mom, so we always had tons of sauce and like lots of frozen sauce in the freezer. So you break it out whenever you did it and stuff. And, um, and it was something that like my grandpa cooked, my grandma cooked, everybody cooked it. And the, uh, the other thing that my mom always used to say was that like only lazy Italians use sugar. Mm. So she was very adamant against putting sugar in anything in the sauce. And she said, you use carrots and onions as the natural sweetener. That's what sweetens it. You cook them down first and then you add the tomatoes in. That's what cuts the acidity of the tomatoes. And uh, <clears throat> so it, when somebody said put veggies in, in ketchup, I was like, oh, it, that not only would that work, like it could cut the sugar, we could really cut the sugar and catch up and that could make, and that would solve my problem with my kids. And I was betting that there is a lot of other parents out there like me that, that have struggled with this ketchup problem with kids pouring ketchup all over their food. And again, ketchup's awful. Like it's, it's got more sugar. Regular ketchup has more sugar than ice cream ounce crumbs. So wow. it's like they're pouring candy on their food. Um, if you pour a tablespoon, which is a serving of ketchup on your hamburger, it's like putting a two inch chocolate chip cookie. It's wow. that much sugar on your burger. Um, and you know, it's this hidden source of sugar that people don't see, they don't realize it. And it's, um, and it's affecting kids most of, which drives me nuts. I think personally, I, I think that's the worst thing about the food industry is how they target kids with sugar. Um, so, so I was adamant about this. I thought this one is exciting. Everybody uses ketchup. 94% of households have ketchup. We don't have to, as a startup, you know, we don't have to teach somebody new how to use something new, right? We're not like educating them what ketchup is or anything like that. We're just right. presenting a better ketchup. Okay. And um, the other thing is, this is like highly shelf stable product, like even our product, because all the vinegar in it is highly shelf stable. So that makes it a little bit easier to launch product. Like I feel really bad for people launching frozen or refrigerated products because the, the logistics and, yeah. you know, having to maintain reefer trucks and everything. It's very difficult. So I thought, you know, this is a great, um, I thought it was a great startup opportunity and there was nothing else like it on the market. Nobody was doing this. Um, nobody still is using putting veggies or fruit and ketchup or barbecue sauce as, as a natural sweetener. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so all those things kind of came together and that's why we decided to push forward with it. Uh, yeah. The only negative side of doing, uh, uh, the ketchup and barbecue sauce world uh, when we started with ketchup is uh, it's a very slow moving category, right? So, you know, if you th think about how many times a year you're buying ketchup, like even the, you know, the average child American household only buys three bottles of ketchup a year. Okay. So, mm -hmm. you know, you now, so now you have to think if you want to make a million dollars, how many customers do you need? Right. And like how many customers like, so if you're selling, uh, ready to drink beverage that people are buying every week or almost daily like then you know you need a lot fewer customers to reach a million dollars than you do with the ketchup right that's true um yeah is and that then, how um, you we want to got yeah. the is that why you decided to do other things like mustard and barbecue sauce and barbecue sauces yep. yeah the barbecue is the first expansion um, we started playing with barbecue. We had a good recipe for barbecue sauce because it's a natural expansion. You're using a lot of the same ingredient for a Kansas city style, like a, which is our original low sugar product, the low sugar Kansas city style barbecue sauce. Um, that's what most Americans think is barbecue sauce, the Kansas city style. Um, yeah, that's what, yeah, most people are <laughs> familiar with that. Uh, <clears throat> when, uh, if you're not from the South or a big barbecue region, you probably, and you, you think barbecue is brown, sauce, thick brown sauce made from tomatoes. That's, um, that the, 
so that was an, it's an easy move because it's a lot of people use ketchup as base for that style of barbecue sauce. And so it was an easy move into it to expand into it. Um, but I didn't, when I got into barbecue sauces, like I really didn't want to be that guy. Like I love barbecue. I, I know everything about it. I've hit like, I absolutely would go try to find unique barbecue places all the time. My kids are obsessed with barbecue to the point where they will, um, they critique my barbecue and um you know make fun of my barbecue if my ribs aren't right or something like that it's like that so Tough my critics. kids are they're they are brutal they're wow. brutal with me because i've exposed them to much better barbecue right yeah. so um uh, <laughs> but they uh you know they we love barbecue as a family but you know the um one thing i was uh, i was so upset with barbecue is that it's become so unhealthy and if you really look at barbecue it's the thing that makes it unhealthy is the sugar and the rubs and sauces mm-hmm. and that's it you know, and those are two very, and the sugar is very unnecessary part of the barbecue sauce, like, um, or the barbecue in general, if you look at it as a full meal, um, barbecue actually could be a superfood. I mean, it could be, you take out the sugar, it's completely paleo. Uh, you know, I mean, I think paleo, obviously this is what people were doing back in the Ithic area. They were cooking meat over fire. Right. right? And, um, you know, it's all real barbecue is just all vinegar, salt, and like really, you know, strong spices and healthy spices like turmeric and paprika and, you know, um, uh, cayenne and, um, uh, black pepper, things like this, garlic, you know, things that are really good for you. And, you know, and regular, you know, a white vinegar or apple cider vinegar, depending on what part of the country you come from, um, and what region and barbecue itself, actually the cuts of meat they're traditionally used in barbecue ribs, uh, pork shoulders, briskets, things like this. They're very high collagen, uh, meats. So if you're buying collagen powders or anything like that, you're buying the stuff that's coming from these cuts of meat in these areas. Cause they come from joints, these area. And the reason barbecue meats have to be cooked this way is because they're, they have a lot of collagen because they're tougher. They're difficult. So you have to smoke it slowly over low heat over a long period of time to get that flavor out. And when you do it right, the flavor is actually better. Right. Mm. So, um, and so that's interesting. Like it's, it's, so it's got lots of collagen, really great, healthy ingredients like apple cider vinegar, um, turmeric, et cetera. And, you know, so I saw barbecue as this amazing potential. Um, and the reason then that I reached out to Ed and Ryan Mitchell, the uh, legendary pitmasters from North Carolina, Ed's a legendary pitmaster, Ryan's his son, the next generation, um, is uh, I didn't want to be that guy, like even though I love barbecue, trying to be the pitmaster and getting out of barbecue sauce on my own. Like I really wanted to have somebody authentic with me and doing this right. Cause I wanted to transform barbecue. I don't want to just have a natural barbecue sauce. Like I look at the natural barbecue sauces in the aisle and think who would buy that? Like, right. What real, guy who has a smoker out back is buying that barbecue sauce. So you want to get, uh, I want to change barbecue culture and bring it back to its roots. And Ed was like the perfect partner for that. He, um, he was pre-diabetic. Mm-hmm. So he was taking a real hard look at his, um, diet and his lifestyle and wondering what, if his barbecue was uh, affecting this. And a lot of people in his community in Wilson, North Carolina and his family were suffering from diabetes when, his grandparents and you know great grandparents those things didn't exist those diseases didn't exist in their community and, you know they, it's all these diseases have come up in the last you know 50 to 100 years um that was also ed, ed was also a, a vietnam veteran so we're both veterans mm. uh, you know as a navy veteran i was a navy pilot um and uh ed was one of the first ones to use pasture raised hogs in barbecue um, or to go back to that, I shouldn't say first ones, modern, one of the modern pit masters to use back. Cause you get, again, you go back 50 years, everybody was using pasture raised hogs, right? right? Um, but uh, he realized, uh, he was, when he was getting big in barbecue, somebody introduced him to these pasture raised and heritage breed hogs. And he realized that this was the flavor of his youth that he was missing, that he had grown up with on his grandfather's farm, you know, because just the free range pigs and stuff like that. And they just taste better because mm-hmm they're eating real food. They're not just being force fed corn all day. Right. So, um, so this was, you know, exciting. We had a lot going for us and he was trying to bring back like a heritage and preserve a cultural tradition that had been in his family for 150 years. And we were trying to go back to that kind of like that old style form cooking, you know, from both my sides of the family as well. So this is all like biggest thing, what we're trying to do. And that's why, again, we're not trying to position ourselves as some niche boutique kind of, um, 
uh, brand, but something that really is something that can go back and be real American food. We're going back to real American food before the big companies kind of destroyed it. Wow. I love it. I mean, that's, that's why we're here. I think a lot of the things that I talk about, whether it's food, herbs for healing or, you know, anything, it goes back to like, what were our ancestors doing? And you've mentioned that a couple of times. And that's what's so wild about the way we live. People think it's so normal and, or don't even think about it. You're eating and ingesting and using things with so much crap in it. Our ancestors were not using things and eating things like that. And they had far less issues with all the autoimmunes and heart disease. And it, it's just, it's bo- mind boggling that, you know, we're in this place where we have to market no added sugar. Like, I love that you do that, but it's sad that we have to do that. You know what I mean? Right. It's almost retraining people. So uh, I have a few things. I'm also <laughs> Sicilian, my dad's side. So shout out to the Sicilians. Nice. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, Best food culture ever. Yeah, love there it. You go. Yes. Um, but I wanted to point out um, really quickly just for people watching it. So the ketchup, for instance, because you were saying veggies and people might be just be like, okay, like yeah. what does that mean? So just to give someone an idea, here are the ingredients. It's tomato puree, apple vegetable puree, or sorry, apple vegetable puree, which is carrots, butternut squash, spinach, and then vinegar, salt, onion powder, and allspice. Like, that's it. It's so clean. It's so simple. And you guys, I love it. Like, I, I, we bought all this stuff. Like, this isn't like a paid promotion or anything. Like, we contacted Abe. We bought this stuff. My husband was shopping and found it. And he's from Atlanta. Is obsessed with barbecue. He's super impressed that you have, like, the Kansas City, the Memphis. Um, you have the Central Texas. Like, you've covered it. Carolina. So, um, Three Carolina cells. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we Three like different Carolina cells. Yeah. We yeah. love condiments in this house and we probably go through more than the average household of like ketchup, but I, I get what you mean about the slow market. So I think it's cool that you added some others in. Um, so you did the ketchup first barbecue sauce and then did mustard come next or the hot sauce? Yeah. Yeah. We just launched the mustards. Um, okay. actually we launched the sriracha early on. The sriracha was something that we did very early. Okay. Um, for a long time we called it varacha, uh, mm. for veggie, veggie sriracha because oh, yeah. all the ingredients in it are vegetables. It's, um, tomatoes, peppers, you know, the, the sriracha peppers are jalapeno. They're really, sriracha peppers are jalapeno peppers. So okay. jalapeno peppers, uh, carrots, butternut squash, spinach, like, uh, you know, we use carrots, butternut squash and spinach in almost every product, mm-hmm. um, apple and some products. Um, we've added dates to just a couple like the cool. Texas and the Memphis mm. to get that extra sweetness to make sure we didn't have to do any sugar. And awesome. then, uh, yeah, the, the low sugar Kansas City barbecue sauce is the only, the Kansas City style barbecue is the only one that has any actual sugar in it, yeah, um, except for or refined sugar. Our and honey only, mustard obviously has honey. Yeah, yeah it's, it's only, only five, five grams. grams. So that's not bad uh, compared to obviously your normal, typical. But what a great idea to, you know, use dates and again, use nature. There's so many things you can do if you're creative. Mm-hmm. I have a question for you though, you know, for people that aren't as innovative with their products and are just cheap and adding uh, sugar or high fructose corn syrup, which is even worse, even more processed. So why are, I mean, why are people doing this? Why are products doing this? Is it because it's cheaper overall, like to use sugar than dates? I mean, why have we gotten to this place where even, you know, salad dressings, I don't think people think about this. If you look, I'm a skeptic. So every time I buy anything, I'm reading the ingredients. But if you look, I mean, anything, always. salad dressings, there's always added sugar, high fructose. Like, what is the deal with that? Is it just one, the palate, it's addicting. And then two, it's probably cheaper to make and shelf stable for longer. Yeah, exactly. I think you hit it. There's three things. It's, yeah, you know, it's, it's extremely cheap. Corn syrup especially has become extremely yeah. cheap. Um uh, to the the addicting factor, mm-hmm. addiction factor, and I think there's this fear nowadays because people have been eating everything with sugar in it for so long that if you take the sugar out, people won't, you know, consumers won't like it and they'll sure. move away from it. So there's this total fear, I think, by, especially by the big companies around that. And then three is um, sugar is an amazing preservative. It replaces mm-hmm. water, like any type of anything that's granule that goes into a. Uh, um, a product, whether it's salt or sugar or vinegar can repl- and it replaces water. Water is the problem when it comes to preservation and making something shelf stable. And, uh, <clears throat> so sugar replaces water and it, it allows it, um, to be made manufactured cheaper because you don't need preservatives. Um, and like one pro- like our challenge with our products, most of our products, because we don't use sugar have to be hot filled at like a very high temperature to make sure that, that we get the shelf life and that we get the, um, 
preservation. Um, so that's a little bit more expensive to make it that way. Um, and like a Heinz or a red gold or any of those other regular ketchups, they all fill at an ambient temperature mm. and they can do that because of the amount of sugar in their product. Um, and they found that I think artificial sweeteners, they can use do the same thing because it displaces. Right. They, it's again, it's just a white powder. They're replacing one white powder with another white powder that yeah. is a highly refined product. So, um, so those are the situations. Yeah. So yeah, the three things there. Um, yeah. So yeah, those are the challenges that we come up against is um, again, makes our product a little bit more expensive to manufacture. It's harder to find packaging to fit it because of the, that's why if you look at our ketchup, it's got a very, um, it's not that clear PET yeah. squeeze bottle. It's like that thick, um, it's a thicker polypropylene um, squeeze bottle to be able to take that 180 degree filter. Yeah. Have to do. I love it. And I love non GMO. I mean, that could be a whole nother episode, but again, it's just, I always say like, I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just shedding light. And then you make your choices. Everyone can make their own choices, but it's just like, it, it blows my mind. I can't say it enough like that the crap that we eat and the fact that the FDA approves this stuff that we don't even know, like how is this stuff going to affect us long-term? It's not real food. So I'm happy that, you know, non-GMO and uh, the sugar, you know, I think a lot of people, there are ketchups now, bigger brands that are kind of waking up. They're taking out the high fructose, but they leave the market that, but then again, the sugar. So yeah. they're, they're trying to add sugar any way they can. Exactly. Yeah. It's uh, and one of the challenges, the two challenges that you're up against is um, as a consumer is that there's like 300 different names for sugar out there. Mm -hmm. There's a nonprofit. I wish I could remember the name right now, but there's a nonprofit out there that actually lists on its website, all the different names for sugar. And they keep having to add to it because there's different names that come out. Um, and there's a lot of, and this is two of the, my frustrations with the natural foods industry. I have two that helped me to start this company. Um, but the natural foods industry really upset me early on in that they were really focused. It was almost more like an environmental movement early on instead of a, um, health movement like it was very or you know number one the most of the food that they created tasted terrible right mm -hmm. and there's just kind of greenwashed um and they they use like organic and non-gmo i understand very important very important certifications um but you can be organic and non-gmo and be very unhealthy totally you know it can still be very bad for you because oh, you yeah. can just be loaded with or you know organic sugar right? organic right. non-gmo sugar can be yeah. loaded with it and plant-based i'm finding the same problem with plant-based plant-based drives me nuts too because a, a vegan lifestyle is great i'm very you know supportive of anybody who wants to do the vegan lifestyle almost all of our products are vegan certified you know obviously the honey mustard isn't um because it has honey in it right. um but <laughs> it can't be honey mustard without honey but just honey is a good alternative to sugar it's got a lot of health benefits yeah. so yeah. Right. And, um, the, but plant-based, I mean, like, uh, like Oreos are vegan, right? You could it's, say it's vegan. Oh, it's right. totally, you, <laughs> yeah. You can have a highly processed food that's vegan. And a lot of the vegan meat substitutes are really highly processed. Yeah, a lot yeah. of crap in them. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's the problem. And we keep getting distracted by these like quick and easy mm -hmm. things like vegan, non-GMO, things like this. When really, you know, stay away from highly processed food and stay away from refined sugars. And, um, there's even, yeah, there's even a competitor of ours out there. I won't say who they are, but they use, uh, pineapple juice mm -hmm. and everything. And pineapple juice is fructose. It's like chemically the same thing in your mm -hmm. body as high fructose corn syrup because it's fructose mm -hmm. and fructose is the main problem that causes most of the, um, you know, it doesn't spike your insulin. So people get excited about it. Um, but it causes much more damage mm -hmm. to your, your body's ability to absorb and, and manage insulin. And, it, you know, your body can't digest fructose if it's not in a fruit package, sure. right? If it doesn't come in its natural package with the fiber and the water, right. um, <clears throat> your body can't digest fructose. So it ends up going right to your liver. It causes fatty mm -hmm. liver disease in kids, all kinds of problems. Um, Robert, Lust Dr. Robert Lustig is like, has a lot of stuff on this. Um, and another really good book is, a. Uh, uh, sugar proof by um dr michael gorn mm -hmm. really good on, on on finding all the sugar that's hidden in these things so yeah avoid anything with pineapple juice like avoid anything with apple juice we use apple so it's like pureed apple mm -hmm. the whole pureed apple skins everything is pureed and nothing's taken out and it's cooked into the sauce and obviously we add a lot of water to to our products so you're getting that water balance and the fiber that you're supposed to get when you're eating. Mm -hmm. It's not as good as eating a real apple, but it's much better. Sure. Everything and it adds a great right. taste. That's the thing. Like I was going to say earlier, 
I, going back to people, you know, are addicted to sugar and all that thing, but I think you'll find when you limit your sugar intake, you don't crave it as much. And so when I eat something that's super sweet, it's actually like appalling to my palate. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, like the ketchup, for instance, it's super tangy. And I love that. Like if you're a ketchup fan, like, I don't know, I think that's why I think your product is so unique. Not only is it healthier, but just the interesting flavor complex, it's got like this punch and I love it. So you don't need yeah, the sugar. <laughs> this was our goal is to t- to prove to people you could take, create something that tastes amazing. Yeah. Like, you know, and I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you if my product, like if my kids, any of my picky eaters weren't eat, you know, downing the stuff, like no problem. Right. And didn't have a problem with it. Like, um, if, you know, and the five-year-old is like the most honest person out there to taste test food, yeah. right? Because like, they will not lie to you. Yeah. A five-year-old will not lie to you. Uh, they will tell you exactly if they don't like something. And so I've had multiple five-year-olds because I got four kids going through this, yeah. like the ages that it's been tested on this, um, uh, test my products. And yeah, so I think we, we created something that was really good. And one of the barriers that we have to overcome is when people see our label that we advertise no sugar, we ad- advertise it as a veggie ketchup, they become suspicious immediately that's going to taste like crap. Yeah. And you know, we, this year we started expanding into food service and we got two ballparks. We're in Boston Red Sox and mm-hmm. in Fenway. Oh, good for you. Um, and we're in the, and we're in the Washington national stadium too, here in DC, nice. um, which is really exciting. Um, and mostly we've had amazing feedback. People have been really excited about the products and stuff like that, but we do get some boomers, you know, who are like extremely upset that their Heinz is gone. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> they, uh, yeah, they just see, and what happens is they don't even try it like, or they don't give you a chance because right. they just see the label is different. They see it's different and they assume it's yeah. going to be bad. Right. And so you you have to overcome this problem. Um, so, and I, and so I wish we could change that mentality, but unfortunately like, you know, there's just way too many natural products that come out that are just, that don't focus on flavor that don't go back to the cooking roots. It's like yeah. people are, they have a mission, but they don't understand anything about food. Mm-hmm. And I think we got to create that balance. Um, totally. not enough. Yeah. There's, there's not a lot of cooks who are launch products, you know, other not a lot of chefs, I should say, not cooks, uh, not a lot of chefs true. that launch products. Yeah. That's something special um, that you have the understanding of that, of how sauce is made and you don't have to add all this crap. And I mean, I think we could take this in so many ways. Like I have so much I want to talk about, but I'm so glad that you are talking about that. I think though, to be positive, I mean, yes, there are going to be a lot of people, you know, in our country specifically that are just set in their ways. You know, I think part of it's habit, some of it's education. Uh, it's hard to change, especially eating habits, but there are people waking up, hence us even talking here. I think people being aware of GMOs being harmful and all the chemicals. And when you were talking about those meats, like I, I eat meat, but I do also balance vegetarian diet in a lot. And I uh, was really excited and I, I hate to like name drop, but I hope when I do this, it actually inspires the brands to become better because they need to be held accountable. But things like the impossible burger, they found there's so much carcinogenic crap in there. It It's super harmful. It'd be better if you're doing it for a diet reason. It's actually better to eat like an organic grass fed beef patty Burger. if you will and i know people do it for different yeah. reasons but if you were doing it just primarily for health it's actually way better to go more natural and so i also think when you were talking about this is something i want people to pay attention to and i talk about my cosmetics is just because it has right. natural on it does not mean it's natural right. um or you know they they hide little things in there and this is my biggest pet peeve and i'd love if you know about it to speak to it what in the hell is natural flavors? What is that? Because I don't know if you're a fan of medical medium. I reference him all the time, but uh, he talks about staying away from those because it, it can mask. It could be anything. You know what I mean? Like what is a natural flavor? And when we were growing up, they didn't have natural flavors, like natural flavors. I, I, what is that? It seems so vague and it makes me nervous. Yeah, we've had to learn a lot about that and we've experimented with it and things like that because, of course, you're always like looking to improve your product to see how things are going. So people are always also pitching you ingredients mm-hmm. as soon as you get to a certain size. Um, and, and one of the problems with it is, like you said, is, is just it's you, it's ambiguous to the, the consumer. Nobody knows what it is. And it really could be anything, which is part of the problem, like um at its most benign, the natural flavor is just an extract, like a vanilla extract or an almond extract or anything like that. So it could be like an, a garlic extract or, you know, or a spice extract that instead of using a powder, you're using an oil, mm. you know, it's because it's been extracted as an, as an oil by being ground into a powder. Um, 
So that is the most benign is it's just an extract of a regular spice mm-hmm. or something like that, or a, or a flavor, like, like the way they um, flavor a hint water or something mm-hmm. like this. Um, the, uh, but the problem is, is like, it could also be, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be from that actual product. Like right. it could be manipulated or created in different ways. And so there are so many different ways in the back ways that they can create the, the food scientists have learned to create these flavors. Right. Um, which, uh, so you don't really know what it is and that's a big problem. And, and they don't want to put the entire thing on the label because it would take up a right. lot of room to explain it all. And it, you know, it sounds bad, right? It's, it's it, natural. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It could look bad. So, um, when you start explaining it, so I, yeah, and that's the other problem. So we did look at like some natural ketchup flavors to try to like pump up the ketchup taste to it. Um, and but we want we always dug into what was in it and it was just, there would always be like one thing like a, like a dextrose added yeah. to it at the last point. And, um, and we'd be like, okay, we can't use this. We yeah. can't use this product. Um, and we need to be more honest. And we, we really like that everything on our label is super clean and really mm-hmm. transparent. Um, and, you know, I just think and that's going to be our earliest adopter as a person who's, who's leading, reading the label. So we need yeah. to stay true to them. Um, and you know, our stuff tastes really good. So, you know, we have like a, 97% positive feedback, um, from when we, when we do large taste tests with a couple thousand people. So, um, most of it's really good. So, yeah, um, it is good. <clears throat> wow. And that's where we're at. Yeah. I think it's, it can get overwhelming and I think maybe that's too why people kind of give up, but I, i I feel like I've trained my husband to do it too, because he'll come home with stuff and I'm like, Sorry, we have to take it back. Like it's got crap yeah. caramel coloring, which is like tied to cancer. And, you know, it's just, it's so awful that uh, I, I, I'm just so upset about it. But I'm happy on a positive note that there are brands like you that are coming out with stuff that's mainstream and available uh, because it is possible. I just, I hope if there's one thing that people that are watching learn today is that it is possible to make food and sauces and even sometimes like a treat that's a healthier option uh, than than things you might have had in the past and I, I do encourage people to really get familiar with ingredients and read because over time it is doing so much damage to our bodies and I, I love I, I know there's controversy over the documentary but years ago I think it's food ink if you don't recognize the ingredient mm-hmm. it's most likely probably not good for you and it's probably processed and broken down and not meant for our bodies to be you know absorbing so right. I think that's just a good like rule of thumb to make it easy. Like if you don't know what something is, I mean, you could Google it, of course, and it is something natural and great. But most of the time, like you said, dextrose and these weird gums and I don't even know, like it just I don't buy that stuff. But uh, I hope that people are inspired to to read ingredients and uh, actually give them a shot because, yes, some of the natural products don't taste that great, but yours are, are really good. And there's tons of flavor yes. and you have variety so I'm just like super yeah. pumped that, that you you did this. Thank you for being a leader in the industry. No problem. We're very much a flavor first company. Like we, we live our products. Like, you know, if, if it's not something that we're going to be using and eating on a regular basis and that we, we can't be proud of, then um, it's not something that we're going to launch. We're not going to go into a category launch product that we don't think it's flavor first. Um, you know, and we compete with some of these companies like, um, like uh, Primal Kitchen does a good job of having pretty clean, products things like this um and green lane obviously a huge respect for mark sissian and everything he's done with the paleo community um but they're really they're a marketing company that makes products you know they outsource their recipes they outsource everything so their products just don't taste good like it's just you know they've hit a they have a couple that they started out with that were okay but you know they just don't taste good they don't spend time sourcing the right ingredients like they're a marketing company that is trying to trade on the primal kitchen name Sure. And, um, and that's kind of a problem like, uh, and now they're owned by Kraft Heinz, so it's yeah. going to get worse. Yeah. Um, right there. I already that's, seen yeah. a lot of the people from their company quit, um, after they, <laughs> so, but yeah, we're, um, one of the challenges that I see and like, to be honest and be fair for everybody out there, like it is really hard. Like every time I, sometimes I've bought products where I'm like, then I get, get at home and I read the ingredients again and I'm like, oh crap, we yeah. can't eat this or we shouldn't be eating this. Super hard, um, yeah. But the other thing I want to push on is like, and one of the, is it's not just like, I think there's a little bit of an overfocus on the cancer piece of it too. Um, just because um, like there's always an argument or a counter argument that if you are 
um, you know, you're not going to eat something so much that it'll give you cancer or anything that if you put like thousands of pounds into, into your body, it'll, it'll give you cancer. Um, what doesn't get tested enough is actually the metabolic effect. And that's because it's harder to test. Like it's really easy. The FDA is constantly testing things for cancer to see if it'll test for cancer. So something like aspartame, right. Um, has been probably been the most tested thing ever out there. Um, and the only way I found it caused cancer, if you would have to eat like thousands of pounds of it, it was ridiculous amounts that nobody would ever eat, consume. Um, but you should still not eat aspartame for metabolic reasons, right? Cause the metabolic effect is much worse and could lead to cancer in a different way. Cause it causes, if you have met- metabolic syndromes, you know, these can lead to cancer, to liver cancer, all these kinds of different problems around your metabolic, uh, area. So, uh, but aspartame has, you know, terrible metabolic negative effects because your body still thinks it's eating sugar. Right. It causes more sweetness, cr- yeah. causes you to crave more, doesn't satiate. Um, it, um, probably also they've, they've found that not even eating sugar, but just eating sweetness like that can cause your insulin to spike. Like there's a, a, a connected effect. Um, and there's a lot of effects that they don't understand yet. Um, and they've found that people who, all this, the only thing that's really been studied enough is they show that people on artificial sweeteners or non nutritive sweeteners do do better than people who go off of sugar, um, you know, metabolically, but they don't do as bad, as well as people who have gone off the non artificial, like it's an in between, right? Yeah. So if you go off the non nutritive and artificial sweeteners completely, you do 10 times better than, sure. you know, than just going off. So it's like, um, so you find a lot of dietitians, if you're confused out there about artificial sweeteners and things like that, um, there are dietitians who recommend them or who will recommend products with them. And usually they're only recommending them because they just want you to stop eating sugar yeah. and to gets, and anybody who's completely addicted to highly processed food, there has to be like a stepping stone, sure. but it's just, it's only a stepping stone for the yeah. love of God. <laughs> like don't feed your kids sucralose no. on a regular basis, yeah. like kind of things like Diet that, Coke especially junkie. your kids who don't. <laughs> Yeah, especially your kids who aren't addicted yet to yeah. this type of thing and don't have that metabolic, and you can still train their their metabolic region. Oh, uh, region. Totally. So, um, so I think that's yeah, that's important too, is to really think, and it's something I wish the FDA would focus more on because we need more government funded yeah. studies. Come on, you know, non nonpartisan studies that are, uh, I mean, not part nonpartisan. It's not the right word, but you know what I mean. Like. Yeah. Uh, um, randomized controlled trials around things like sugar alcohols and um, artificial sweeteners that haven't really been tested enough yeah, um, long-term looking at the metabolic effects. Uh, things like this. And again, we should be focused on metabolic effects and how they're you know, affecting absorption into liver, how they're affecting your gut microbe, yep. how they're affecting all these other important things. I think that's, that's um, totally it. It's, it's affecting you in ways we don't even know. I think just like autoimmunes and I'm really big into all that kind of stuff. Just process your body has to work so much harder it doesn't recognize it um we weren't we weren't built to be eating all these weird things so yeah yeah and i think like they find like erythritol and allulose like really hot sugar alcohols that are in everything right now all these keto products have them and stuff the fda limits how much you can put into a single product because the stuff doesn't get absorbed by your gut like it literally cannot be absorbed by your gut it goes right through into your gut Uh, so um, we don't know what the long-term effects of that is yet. So. That's true. Yeah. And I mean, again, like I don't mean to like be a name dropper, but just some of these bigger, well, I don't, I need, I don't need to say the names, but just these bigger corporations, like you said, like I just, I don't know, it's hard to compete with them, but, uh, they need to be held accountable, you know, and that's the problem with money and profit and it goes in any industry, of course, but it makes me happy to see you doing well. And I, I really am a big fan of supporting smaller companies uh, because of that. So like the fact that you guys are in, in the baseball field, like that's awesome. Like these are the changes that are possible and are slowly happening. And I just hope it continues to happen. Um, you deserve to be highlighted. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, if you really want to help, if you're out there and you're listening, like go, I mean, obviously buy the products, buy good products, like read ingredients, yeah. buy good products, you know, support that on the grocery shelves. Really important. Um, it is important to support these things on the grocery shelves too, because then the grocery stores see the data yep. and they, you know, and, and they see the trend mm-hmm. and they'll reorder and they'll, mm-hmm. they'll dedicate more shelf space to these types of products. Um, and <clears throat> when you go to out to eat and things like that, or you go to a ball game, like, um, you know, complain yeah. that they have Heinz ketchup, That's you know, true. complain yeah. that they, you know, say there's better options out there. Like mm-hmm. if you go to a diner and they've got all they've got is Heinz ketchup, be like, how come you don't have a sugar-free ketchup? Right. How come you don't have no sugar ketchup? Like, 
because that's the only way things are going to happen. That's the only way they added plant-based meats to restaurants, you know, is because people. consumers started demanding vegan, right. enough people that's started true. demanding vegan options. Um, so, you know, and that's really where the change is going to happen. Because if you think retail is bad, like you think grocery store products and consumer product goods in grocery stores are bad, food service is just oh, a nightmare. It's awful. The stuff that's in there. And it's um, harder you though to control. What you're that's what so, that sucks, you know, because I mean, joking, like, well, kind of not. I could throw this in my bag and go go watch a Mariners game or something, right? But I mean, yeah, that is so, I can control in my home. But when I'm out, it's so much harder. You know what I mean? You're like, oh, well, you know, I'll just have a little bit here and there, which, okay, yeah, in moderation, anything's probably okay. But okay. you think of all the times you go out and you go do things and you're traveling and it is a good point to uh, to complain or just, to, you know, heads up, like there's these really great brands. Um, I, I would like to start writing into companies more and encouraging them to remove things like high fructose. And, you know, I, I will not be buying your products until you remove caramel coloring. I mean, even I love, love, love Trader Joe's, but a lot of their things, even the natural stuff, organic, and it's got caramel coloring in it. It's like, why do you, why does it matter what color the... And the, a lot of sugar. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just so yeah. annoying. <laughs> it's because they, um, you know, Trader Joe's outsources, they they outsource to other companies that make them or their products for yeah. them. And like a lot of times you go to these, you'll go to this uh, uh, product factory and that's the way they make it yeah. and either you buy it that way or not right. um and so trader joe's is, is limited in that i mean they have the buying power to probably make that change but sure you know, and i've complained before to. but it just i think we've been so trained to think that something has to be a certain color or a certain this or a certain that mm -hmm. and if we can get out of that mindset i think we could really shift things in the food industry do you have any like words of wisdom or encouragement just for the big brands out there i mean i know at the end of the day, let's be honest, like we said, it, it comes down to money. Like you're going to talk to the, the diners, like, why aren't you buying, you know, a better ketchup? Well, we have a budget. And I mean, they could probably afford to do it, but it, it always comes down to money. And I would love to see these companies care more about our bodies and then profit. And I think over time people would support them and buy it and they'd be just fine. So I guess like, what do you have to say to other leaders in the industry I mean, I would, you know, encourage people to one, fo start focusing on the sugar. The yeah. sugar is the long-term thing. Like, you know, um, non-GMO, et cetera, like, yeah, as, as important as that is really corn and soy are the only two products in the U S and beets. And maybe that are really GMO that really need to worry about it. Things like that. There's yeah. very little, uh, non-GMO in our system, um, uh, plant-based. Okay. But you know, really at the end of the day, it's sugar that's killing everybody. It's sugar that's causing all the uh, metabolic diseases. So it's refined and highly processed foods and sugar, which should go hand in hand. Um, and, you know, so people need to start harping on sugar. This is it. I mean, this is sugar is my soapbox on this. And I think we need to get rid of, um, you know, highly processed foods and sugar, especially highly processed refined carbohydrates, not anti-carbohydrate. I'm not so keto that I'm like anti-carbohydrate. I understand the difference between good carbohydrates and bad carbohydrates. It's the highly processed fine carbohydrates that are the problem. And that's mainly sugar, you know, sugar, and you know, the white flour type of foods. Um, or the, you know, the white rice, white flour type stuff. So yeah, harp on that. Those two things are the things that we need to be going back to. And mm -hmm. again, those things were not in our diet. Like actually Americans ate, have eaten meat, tons of meat for centuries. I don't think actually that meat consumption has actually increased. It's um, there's different studies to show different things, but um, it's, I mean, we eat much healthier meat, yeah. you know, we eat natural meat, you know, you know, pasture raised, you know, grass fed cows and things like this and ate a lot more wild meat. People were eating venison and things like this and wild boar stuff, um, which I think would, would be great. I'm not a hunter myself cause I grew up in cities, but um, I, you know, I think that's actually really encouraging that like, I think that's something that we should be eating that natural meat. That's the way humans have eaten for a long time. Um, and then, uh, but yeah, it's sugar. It's highly processed sugar, refined sugar. That's what's come into our diet and has dominated the most calories in our diet. Um, there's a really good study that was out and showed that in world pre-world war two, um, about a third of the Americans couldn't qualify for military service because they were malnutritioned, right? Mm -hmm. Malnourished. And that was from a lack of calories coming out of the depression, things like this. Right now, about two thirds of Americans can't qualify. Two thirds of military age Americans can't qualify for military service, and um, mainly because of metabolic diseases and things like this and obesity. And it's not, they are malnourished, but it, it's not from a lack of calories, right? We haven't, now we've, we've gone from 
a lack of calories and excess of, and good nutrition to uh, excess of calories and zero nutrition. The, you know, the problem is a lot of Americans, the standard American diet, the sad diet is full of calories and has zero nutritional value to it. Um, you know, no fiber, no healthy fats, um, no vitamins and nutrients. And so that's the problem that I think that I want to see addressed. It's like getting back to real foods being cooked into this sink and fixing our supply chain to be able to supply this yeah. stuff. Um, and not trying to just, and the big thing, again, going with that is like, not just trying to replace one white powder with another. Like, you're like, okay, people don't like sugar. And this is how the big companies think. They're like, okay, we, we people aren't buying sugar anymore. We need to, what, what can we put in this to, we get this keep the same yeah. taste okay oh, sucralose yep. which is splenda we'll put splenda yeah. in there there we go and then people think Another oh white it's powder. okay you know it's healthier <laughs> and that's sugar yeah. yeah no it's refined i mean this has been the stevia thing too and so you know don't believe the hype i mean like the people going off on stevia stevia is they're all oh, stevia is plant-based it comes from a plant yeah corn syrup comes from a plant corn but syrup comes from corn changed. right it's, yeah totally it's been changed yeah. it's been taken out it's been broken down to a single molecule you take yeah. a leaf and you end up with a molecule right um so it's not the same totally. stevia also tastes terrible that's a whole nother agreed story. yeah i uh, don't get why people eat that st- some of that just tastes awful like i'd rather if i'm gonna eat something sweet like give me some real yeah. sugar I'm not going to eat this yeah. crap chemical that doesn't even taste good. Like Diet Coke. I don't know how right. people drink that stuff. It's awful to me, but yeah. Yeah. That's and good. I think, yeah, yeah. If we, and as consumers, if we, you know, we, we make sacrifices in certain areas, but like try to um, create. So what we wanted to create was something where with your barbecue and your ketchup. And if you go to a ballpark, if you're taking your kids to the baseball game for the day, you're going to, you're, they're going to eat hot dogs. They're going to eat French fries. And um, hopefully you don't give them a soda, but like <laughs> the, the water, but you'll probably drink a beer um, and you'll probably get the ice cream. Right. So you got to figure, you know, you're making a sacrifice s- somewhere. Okay. You know, if you're adding sugar laden corn syrup ketchup on top of everything else, with, uh, you're getting a hot dog and french fries already. Yeah. So it's already not the perfect meal. And right. then you're getting a ice cream and then you're getting, giving, letting them pour ketchup all over their food, which has more sugar than the ice cream that they're <laughs> about to eat. That's crazy. Like, so we're trying to help that and balance that. Because I think of the, I always come from everything as a dad, like and thinking like, you know, how best can I manage the great, I want them to have a happy, great experience at the ball game. Um, and I like, want, but I want them, yeah. but keep it healthy, as <laughs> totally. healthy as possible. Right. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and we're not expecting people to eat kale and quinoa salads every day. Right. And I want them to be able to eat a hot dog. I want them to be, you know, the hot dog not to have nitrates. And sure. I want to be, you know, but you're, you're starting, in, you're starting in yeah. one area at least. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. exactly. And so we're starting with the, cause honestly, the condiments are the worst part. Like if yeah. uh, French fries are not great for you, but the ketchup is 10 times worse. Sure. The ketchup that you're putting on the French fries is 10 times worse for you. Yeah. That. Um, so that's a good point. Yeah. Well, I love it. I love that you started somewhere. I'm like hoping I'm like, will you start creating other things like salad dressings <laughs> and other dips? Because I would totally buy them. Do you have anything uh, that you're working on or is it kind of you you just did the mustards like kind of where are you guys at what are you thinking do you have any goals is there anything you can share or? I, long term we hope i mean if we can grow to be a big enough company you know knock on wood we'll be we want to get into every category and be out there and, okay. be, and, be, and just really take over but you know short term um we're trying to stay close to what we do to sure. you know to be efficient um we are launching rubs soon mm. barbecue rubs because barbecue rubs are just loaded with sugar all yeah. the time and it, it does nothing for you like sugar does nothing but sit on the top and create a bark like when you're doing a barbecue um so we're doing barbecue rubs without sugar and we're looking instead of doing salad dressings um we're really going to do it salad dressing mixes like yeah. a, a like a spice mix mm-hmm. Cause it's always driven me nuts. I always make my own salad dressings for everything. And like, it's driven me nuts. Anybody buys a bottled salad dressing. Cause mm-hmm. it's so easy to make at home. And so we thought, so tell me if you think this is a good idea, but like it's a, a pouch with the right amount of mix for a type of salad dressing and just ingredients on the back, like a cup of olive oil yeah. and you know, half a cup of lemon juice I love it. and then boom, yeah. add yeah. this and you got, you have your own salad. dressing. That's so right? easy. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we can even do enough so that you could put it in a shaker and have it for the week in sure. the fridge, right? And then that or, way too, because sometimes I even don't go through salad dressings because a lot of the time I'll just use like oil and vinegar and salt and pepper at home. But yeah, yeah, then the salad dressing bottle goes bad in the fridge unless it's like wishbone with like all the crap. But yeah, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. But I like the idea of the yeah. packets because it, it'd be just like a fresher, yeah. It's more natural that way. Because the problem with salad dressing, the reason there's always these emulsifiers and all the preservatives mm-hmm. in it is the oil goes bad. Yeah. Olive oil is expensive, so they don't 
want to use olive oil. So they're trying to use, they're cutting it with soy, soybean oil yeah. or canola oil or anything like that. Um, it separates, so it looks bad. So they use emulsifiers mm. to keep it going. And the oil is going to go rancid too. Yeah. So any, almost any salad dressing bottle you're buying, because then people realize oh, olive oil goes bad over time. Most old oils go bad over time. They go rancid. And um, the salad dressings, they go they go rancid. They taste bad. So even if you're buying a natural good for you salad dressing, it's probably rancid oil. Because yeah. if you think about the supply chain that it takes to make it and then get sure. through the distributor and sit on the shelf. Um, and if you don't use it all the first time, it's yeah. going to go rancid. Whereas if you're buying your own olive oil, mm -hmm that stuff is going to be fresher. You'll go through it faster, right. things like this. So, okay. um, I like that. I like the packets. I love it. Thanks. Okay, good. Mini we'll, shark we'll, tank. We'll move I, I approve. I will invest, meaning I will buy it at the store. <laughs> I'll be your, <laughs> your consumer investor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. And that's, yeah. Okay. Um, we get that because that's how uh, actually Hidden Valley Ranch started that way. It's they just have selling the, the packet, exactly the packet, the spice packet. And they were mm -hmm. like, just add your own, Mayonnaise sure. and lemon juice or whatever. And that's nice too because if you go exactly. like on trips or something like an Airbnb or you have a condo with a kitchen and you bring that with you and just, you know, if they have oil or you, you can bring your own oil, whatever, but like that'd be a good way to keep things that's non-perishable and yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. I love it. So yeah. And then it gets people cooking, but they don't have to like really right. know how to make the salad dressing, right? Totally. You know, you, yeah. you're, so. I love that. Um, nice. So, so. Okay, cool. So we're just trying to, you know, fix it up, shake it up a little bit, get people thinking, get people cooking, yep. uh, I thinking love it. about what's in your ingredients, balancing it out. Yeah, cool. Nice. Well, like, like I said, I mean, people watching, like if this is one thing I hope that you learned today, if you haven't been conscious, that's what my podcast is about, but being conscious in all aspects of your life, it's not that hard. <laughs> if you don't know the ingredients, if it's got a ton of sugar, avoid it, support brands that care and that taste good. Um, true made foods. We'll put the link in, uh, the description of the podcast, but where can people find, find you? Let us know about the website. If you have an Instagram, social media, uh, what like major chains are you in? So people that are shopping. Yeah. yeah so our website's truemadefoods.com. Um, Instagram's at true made foods. Um, same with Facebook slash true made foods. Um, and then you can find us at major chains are, uh, sprouts carries almost all of our products. Okay. Um, they carry everything except for our cayenne hot sauce. Like literally it's the only place you can find all six of our barbecue sauces. Okay. Um, so sprouts is great. Uh, whole foods carries four of our SKUs. Um, we, we carried in most of the Kroger's in the natural set. So that's our QFC yep. and, um, is a, a Kroger banner. And, uh, yeah, and some Safeway divisions okay. we're in. We're in some Safeways. Um, so in Seattle, I think they carry our ketchup and our Kansas City style barbecue sauce. Okay. The Safeway there. Cool. Um, and uh, yeah, so and uh, I think can you find was, any of them on Amazon? I think I looked, and there was maybe one or two. Maybe we have some of our older SKUs on Amazon. Okay. We're switching our Amazon um, provider, so like our okay. Amazon back sure. office or backend operations. And so we haven't launched our new SKUs on Amazon yet. Okay. Um, but people could find some of your stuff there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And uh, yeah, the, the mustards are starting to get out there everywhere. So yeah. you gotta look for those. They're yeah. all, they're in all sprouts. Um, they'll be in Whole Foods next year. Okay. Um, yeah. Awesome. Really excited yeah. I mean, we found all, we got the, the packs of the, you can buy like singular or like the packs of, is it three or six? We have both. We yeah. have a variety of packs. So barbecue did. sauce, we have a we have a six pack and a three pack of the variety so of the barbecue sauces. Okay. Um, the three pack is just the Carolina styles because we have the three different Carolina. If yeah. you're not familiar, there's three different regions of Carolina. Yeah, Carolina I'm learning barbecue. all the things. There's apparently there's like bold and tangy with gold, and then what is there? The red. Yep, red yeah, pepper. The red sauce. <laughs> Cool. And then the Eastern, which is just pure vinegar. So you yeah. have to really like vinegar. Don't yeah. like the Eastern. Most I like vinegar. Don't. Yeah. Okay. And you can but actually yeah. see it separated and I have no problem with that because I know that that's how it naturally should occur. So that's, that's cool. how it's supposed to look. Exactly. Yeah, without an emulsifier. Totally. Cool. Yeah. And if you, yeah. People don't realize like North Carolina is divided. There's a line that goes through rally and there's literally been fist fights over the type oh, of barbecue sauce. Geez. I know people are the yeah, the Eastern. very serious about their barbecue sauces. So I'm excited to do a taste uh, test of all these. And like I said, I plan to do a little product review uh, sometime on my YouTube channel. So stay tuned for that. But uh, you can find everything obviously on the website. That's how we, we bought it. And I'm actually planning to give one or two of the barbecue sauces to my dad this Sunday in his little father's day gift. So Get creative with your gifts. Give people good stuff that you love because our bodies deserve it. Um, do you have any closing 
thoughts or uh, happy, you know, just keep uh, demanding more, yeah. like, you know, go out there, tell, uh, you know, tell, and, and people don't think about this, but ask restaurants, ask them, yeah. start asking for sugar-free options yeah. at restaurants or asking if sugar is in things, totally. um, ask, ask them what kind of barbecue sauce they use in the restaurant. It's most likely sweet baby rays or cattleman's ranch, which is like 16 grams of sugar per oh, serving, which is terrible. Yeah, horrible. Um, and you know, make them realize that people are asking what's in the product and the, and what they're serving. Yeah. Yeah, if you demand it, you know, that's what creates yeah. change. So I love it. And, and support politicians who support, um, you know, sugar taxes and things mm-hmm. like this yeah. and um, more transparent labeling. Um, it's really important. The sugar industry is there. The soda industry has done an, a ton underhanded um, things to um, stop uh, sugar taxes and yeah. um, transparent sugar labeling. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we need to treat sugar like we did with tobacco. Um, cause it's just as bad, if not worse. Yeah. So, I mean, and I it affects kids. Totally. Yeah. With behavioral issues, ADD, ADHD, ADHD, oh, wow. more other stuff. But I think I was going to mention too, I'm sure this is like the classic study, but they've done studies with rats where I think they've had like sugar and cocaine and they go back to the sugar. Like sugar is so addicting. It is beyond bad. It's insanely addictive. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, and once you clean yourself of it, like it's amazing, like how much you know, more work you can get done, how feel much better, better you feel. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. Definitely. Yeah. So yeah. we're here to help. Like we just want to help people with that, things like that. Yeah. And, uh, well, thank you so much for, for making awesome, awesome stuff and being a leader in the industry. I hope that, you know, we can get to a place where this is the norm. Uh, it's going to take some work, but this is a start and it's awesome. So Please, please, everybody, uh, true, true made foods, support them. We got to keep them rolling and hopefully they'll get into some other areas of the industry as well. Um, Abe, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Lauren. Thanks for having me. Thanks for spreading the word. Oh, Thanks yeah. for having a podcast like this that does these things. Thanks for totally. you know, taking the interest and the time. Oh, yeah. Do. It's been super fun just to have cool guests. And I mean, I learned some really cool things. Like like I, like I said, we could have a whole episode just on barbecue. I mean, that that's a huge <laughs> thing, right? So all the barbecue right, nuts right. out there will have to give your products a try, but... Anywho, thanks guys for listening. And as usual, you can find me on Instagram at Real Lauren Live, my website, lauren.live. And uh, head over to the YouTube channel, subscribe, like. We got to keep this stuff rolling so people get the messages. Uh, we got a lot of good stuff coming. And uh, stay tuned for my product review on all of the mustards and ketchups and all the things, all the dips. All right, guys. <laughs> Cheers. Take care. <laughs>